Good Monday, makers. It's time for another Build Roundup episode, and in this week, we're going to be looking at trellis ideas that were shared throughout last season. Figured you guys are probably planting gardens as it gets closer to spring, so thought it would be a good time to you know look at some builds from the past and get some ideas. So that's what we're going to do. We're inside the community, inside the gardening section, and we're going to look at some builds shared last year. First up is this one from Anthony. This is a simple trellis built for a raised round, kind of one of those oval steel garden beds you've probably seen. It's really simple. It's got the four conduit verticals just buried in the in the soil there. And then it's got some cross bracing with some 45 degree connectors. Really simple. And uh, then there's trellis uh, netting going down, just tied off on the frame, which is a nice and simple way to do it. And it's just secured up there on those cross pipes and then it goes down to the plants. Nice and simple. Just, you know, a few pieces of conduit, a few connectors, and you get a great trellis uh, to allow the cli uh, plants to climb on. So that's a great one from Anthony. Thanks for sharing that one. Next up, we've got one from Nicholas, and this one looks really awesome. It's kind of a unique shape. This is for a raspberry plants or multiple raspberry plants. And you can see on the sides, it's got this vertical pipe with uh, 180 in the middle that kind of sends these pipes off to the side. And on the back, there's a pipe that runs from uh, this very, you know, this side on the left all the way to the other side, and it goes all the way over. And then there's some um, some string going across into some eye hooks you can see there that are drilled through the frame, and uh, that just gives another uh, kind of level to the trellis so the plants can climb on. And uh, all the pipes are paint painted brown. It looks nice up against the fence, really good color. As you can see, here's some pictures that Nicholas shared of the paint process. And it looks like he's got quite a few of them in the backyard there. And it looks like the, the raspberry plants are loving it and they're growing on it, which is always awesome to see. But this is a, a really great freestanding trellis design. I think it's secured in the ground uh, using the method where you just hammer in a you know rebar pin or a stake in the ground and then slide the conduit over. That works really well for a freestanding trellis as you can see here, but great one from Nicholas. Thanks so much for sharing that. Next up is one from Zach, and this one is really interesting. You know, a lot of the ones that we see kind of double as different things, so maybe it's an enclosure, um, it's also a trellis, it's also a greenhouse uh, to do, you know, do different things. And because you know conduit and connectors can be a modular solution, you can kind of do that based on the seasonality of what you need. If you need a greenhouse in the winter, uh, then an enclosure, then a trellis. And here we can see Zach has basically got these raised wooden garden beds that look awesome. And on top, he's built these rectangles out of conduit and maker pipe using a few different connectors. There's 90 degree connectors in the corners, as you can see. He's got some 180s to continue the run and then add this vertical pipe that goes up. And you can also see there's an arch roof and it looks like a, a large radius bend for the, the roof's part. And uh, you can see that he added some cattle panels to the outside of the frame, and they just kind of sit up against the frame and then even arch over and attach. I can't really see exactly how they're attached. I would imagine, you know, zip ties or some, like, wire straps, different things like that. You know, real simple, inexpensive solutions that work great for this kind of stuff. But it's awesome. There's plenty of places for the plants to grab onto and climb up the, uh, the cattle panels. And uh, it also kind of doubles as an enclosure if you close off the rest of the, you know, the sides. Um, but here it is as a trellis and it looks awesome in this backyard. So thanks so much, Zach, for sharing that. Looks fantastic. Next up, we've got one from Gregory. And this is another steel raised garden bed. Looks like a little smaller than the other one, maybe. Maybe it's just the angle of the photo. But another simple one. Basically, there's just four verticals that are also buried in the soil. They just go up. And then there's T-connectors to basically add this rectangle at the top. And then there's some, you know, cross pipes that have some, um, you know, string going down from the pipes, just tied off again, that go down into the soil. And then there's also a little bit of, you know, chicken wire around the bottom. And this acts as an enclosure for the plants to keep them safe from, you know, different animals and whatnot. So this is kind of one of those that doubles as a, an enclosure and a trellis, as you can see. And if you wanted to, I mean, you could, you know, put greenhouse plastic on the outside of this frame going all the way up and turn it into a, you know, kind of frost-proof enclosure as well. And that's kind of uh, really cool to see the versatility of the different things that people are building. But that's a great one from Gregory. Thanks so much for sharing that. This is one from Melissa. Actually, it looks like several. And she said, after the summer season was over, I concluded the garden needed both shade and good trellising. I wanted a structure that would allow multiple types of veggie support to be used, and this was the solution. So I think it has 
uh, a sunshade on one side, as you can see here for these plants. And then it has a, a different kind of trellis netting here. She said she has multiple different types of plants, so she wanted to be able to customize the trellises to support the different plant, plants in different ways. As you can see here, she's got the netting going down for these, and then she's got the sunshade over here. And then this side, I think she said she's going to, you know, add some, you know, sunshade or trellising or whatever. You can kind of, you know, as we've talked about, make it modular, swap things out based on what you need. But it looks like a great uh, solution. And basically, she's just got the, the vertical pipes. It looks like they go inside of the corner pieces here. Sometimes these, you know, modular garden beds that I've seen, they give you like those pillars that have, you know, slots that you can basically slide in the walls. And you can extend it for a while, uh, you know, do one panel on the side or two, and basically however you want to do it. And I think there's a slot in the middle, and I think she's actually utilizing those for the conduit vertical. And she just added... Wherever there was uh, one, you know, one of those corner pieces for the bed, she added a pipe going up, and then she just used some T connectors and different things for the the cross pipes. And basically, you can add a pipe wherever you need to, uh, based on whatever you're putting on it, whether it be enclosure material or, you know, greenhouse plastic or trellis netting, whatever it may be. You can kind of customize based on where you want to put those pipes at. And here's another shot. It looks like tomato plants climbing up on it. So, really great, Melissa. Looks like it's working out awesome. And it's a great trellis. Thanks so much for sharing that. Here's one from uh, Nancy. And we saw in the last roundup that we did with Dave last year, we saw kind of the first edition of this, but she kind of remodeled it. And she's got two of the um, these um, plant trays that she has on the deck put side by side. They used to be a long ways. And she got those side by side. And then she just built basically a freestanding trellis. The pipe just runs along the edge of the, the trays here then goes up and then down and goes down the other side. And then she connected the two uh, so you can walk underneath here. And she's got a sunshade that'll protect the garden. And then she's also got the trellis netting attached to the poles that are going all the way down. And it looks really great. Nice solution. I think she said she's going to be updating this whole area and doing all kinds of different uh, you know, builds here. You can see there's a little entryway to kind of route this uh, pipe or this hose over the entryway using conduit maker pipe but so she's going to be updating all these garden beds and doing a clean out and maybe we'll see that this coming season um, but last season she did this with the uh, the plant trays and it looks awesome another great solution for a trellis thanks so much nancy for sharing that next up is this arts trellis from raymond and this is really awesome as you can see it looks really cool with the large radius bins on top and he shared a complete write-up for how to do that and it was a huge inspiration for us doing the incremental bending calculator and video tutorial so a huge shout out to raymond for sharing that we can see his trellis here it looks like he's got one two three four five six seven verticals that go up and then they uh, arch and then connect in the middle and then go down on the other side and he even 3d printed a little hub in the back as we can see in one of these photos here you can kind of see a glimpse of it there here it is he 3d printed this as kind of a, a hub for a few of these pipes to come in and there we get a close-up of a 180-degree connector that he's got branched off there that goes up and connects to this one up here. And here's an updated photo of the plants actually climbing up the trellis. And it looks like they're liking it a lot, and uh, they're growing really well on there, which is awesome to see. He painted all of the pipes green. As you can see, here it is with the silver connectors and the silver conduit. Uh, but he painted it green, and it looks nice. And uh, just a really great trellis, again, with uh, you know the verticals going up, and they arch over. And then they're kind of connected to each other with these pipes over here that are kind of offset from each other using T connectors. And then on the top, they go up and connect to the, the, you know, the bar that goes from front to back. And then they either connect with a maker pipe connector or they have a, uh, a you know, kind of a hub here, a 3D printed hub that he made as well. So that's really great. He shared all kinds of tips in here for incremental bending, uh, including some tips like, you know, marking the conduit all the way down and then lining it up with the bender head and a mark that he put on there just to make sure that the the bins uh, stay in the same plane because that's really important when you're doing incremental bins. He also shared this cool one where you take a clamp and hold the tape measure onto the pipe, which is really great if you've ever built by yourself and you've hooked you know tape measure onto something, uh, you know it falls off. It's really annoying. So clamping it on the end like that is a really smart way to keep it attached. Then there he used like a square to um, uh, you know add the line and make it consistent all the way down the pipe for, for bending. So all kinds of cool stuff in here, including the, the write-up for how to do the incremental bending and all the different tips and things. So huge shout-out to Raymond for all this information and a great trellis build. 
Next up is this one from Paul, and this is interesting. This is a crack key method uh, for growing plants. And here it is inside the bucket here. That's how you do the crack key method. It's like inside the bucket. I, had, I didn't really know too much about this, so I learned a little bit about it. Um, but he built a stand for the buckets that also doubles as a trellis. You can see here he's got you know four verticals. They're, they're short in the front, and in the back they go way up. And then there's you know cross pipes that are connected together with T's, and then one that goes from the side to the other side. And there's buckets that sit on that uh, cross pipe, and that's kind of what supports the buckets. And then the pipes in the back that go up, just connect at the very top with a T connector and one cross pipe. And then there's uh, some netting, and uh, that's just attached with zip ties. Looks like a great solution for uh, for this kind of growing. And here we can see a, a model they did beforehand with the Maker Pipe Minis. And that's a great way to kind of plan out a build like this if you're doing it. Especially now if you're planning for a garden that's in the spring, you can get some minis and kind of plan out your build so when it comes time, you know exactly what you need and you know can start building. And uh, it just looks like a fantastic solution with, uh, he's got some feet on there, some kind of bases there he's got attached. And uh, yeah, it just looks really great and a, a nice solution for, for this kind of growing. And even if you're doing, um, even if you're doing a, you know, a different kind of trellis, this is still a good method or a different type of gardening method. This is still a good trellis to keep in mind, you know, just zip tying, um, zip tying the trellis netting to a frame like this works out great. So really awesome. Thanks so much for sharing this, Paul. Really awesome to see. Next up is another um, trellis for bucket hydroponics, as you can see here. So he's growing tomato plants inside of these, and this comes from Paul as well. I think it's a different Paul. Yeah, it is a different Paul. Um, but this is, uh, he's got this, you know, simple stand with cinder blocks and, and wood that goes across, and the buckets are sitting on that, and he's got a whole hydroponic system, it looks like. And the tomato plants are inside the bucket, and he basically just made this frame really simply with, uh, looks like three verticals that are attached to the house, and then there's some pipes that kind of stick out the front. And he finished off the rectangle using some T connectors. Then he used 45 degree connectors to brace the, you know, the top rectangle with the, the pipes on the wall. And then from the back pipe, he's got some, uh, just some rope uh, going down to the bucket so the trellis or so the tomato plants can grab on. And it's a really simple trellis, but it looks like it's working great. And you can even see the plants are already grabbing on. So that's really awesome from Paul and a great method. And I just love seeing builds like this because it just shows the you know, the creativity of people to solve a problem that they have. You know, he's got this area set aside for this hydroponic gardening and he needed a custom frame and that's what he did. He was able to attach it to the house and make it exactly how he wanted it. So that's always cool to see. Thanks so much, Paul, for posting that in the community. Next up is a great one from Heather and this is another steel raised bed and there's so many great hacks in this. You know, the other ones we've saw so far or we've seen so far had pipes going inside of the bed, just kind of sitting in the soil, which is fine. You can do that, no problem. Uh, but the way that Heather did it was really cool as well. She basically made some spacers. And what this is, she took the bolt out of the side of the bed and she replaced it with a, a, a PVC spacer that she cut. And there's a bolt that goes through it and out through the spacer. Then she's got a conduit one hole strap attached to the spacer here. And the bolt just goes through the PVC, through the one hole strap, and then a nut to kind of cap it off and tighten it all together. And that basically just allows you to create this mount for conduit. And you could take that nut off and you could just, you know, take off the pipe really easily and replace that bolt if you wanted to back with the original one that goes in the side. And that's super clever and a great way to do the mount for this stand. And this is one of those that meant, is meant to be several things, including a trellis and frost proofing. And uh, I think an enclosure as well. And you can see it's got four verticals that go up and they're just connected with 90 degree connectors in the corners and then T connectors that go across in the middle. And then basically she just modifies it to whatever she needs. Here you can see she's got cattle panel uh, arched over the top with um, some of the trellis uh, rope going down and for the plants to grab onto. In this picture you can see where she moved that um, arch piece down and then she just put some of the sunproof or the uh, greenhouse plastic or sunshade material over top of the cattle panel and everything to kind of uh, add some frost protection there. And then here's a shot of it. You can see before the, you know, the plastic is on there uh, with that arch piece of cattle panel. And it's just, you know, completely modular. She can change it however she wants to based on what plants are in there or what time of year it is which is really cool to see. So that's really awesome. Thanks so much, Heather, for sharing that. A lot of great ideas in there. 
Next up is a build from Tom, and he says he's got 250 pounds of tomatoes. Last year he did PVC, and he said it turned into a pretzel. Uh, so he did it with conduit this year just to add some extra strength to the whole structure. And here you can see he's got some plants that roll around on these like rolling garden beds and basically just made this freestanding frame that goes around um, the ground using you know probably 90 degree connectors or T connectors to just create that rectangle. And there's a bunch of verticals that go up and connect to this rectangle at the very top using uh, T connectors I see a lot of. There's a 180 in there, uh, 90 degree connectors in the corner. Uh, looks really great. Here's kind of a close up of that top frame with the 90s and T's and everything. And then here, here's a shot of the, the rolling cart as well. And then here you can see he's got the, um, the tomato. Uh, I, I, I've seen these before. I don't know exactly what they're called, but we see them used a lot with gardeners. And we've seen people kind of modify the top hook to either kind of just re-bend it and kind of make a round hook out of it and then wrap it over the pipe. Or you can also do what he did here, which is basically just use zip ties to hold the hook to the frame. And he just added those wherever he needed on the pipes. Uh, you know, to support the plants so they could climb up on, as you can see here, in all these different places around the frame. Here it is all attached. Looks awesome, Tom. Said he used uh, white shrink wrap on the pipes. Kind of looks like PVC, but it is kind of it was shrink wrap. And then he's got the black maker pipe connectors there. But it looks fantastic. Thanks so much, Tom, for posting that. Really great to see. Next up is a mini model of a garden trellis from Bradley. And like I said, these are a great way to plan out builds if you're, you know, trying to you know, plan ahead, get ideas now and then you know build a few months from now or you know soon whenever it's time to get out there and garden and uh, using the minis is great for that he's got the t connectors here at the bottom uh, and then they just go up and with a vertical pipe and then he used some 135 degree connectors and 90 degree connectors to basically build this simple kind of uh, arching triangle roof trellis and it looks great and uh, maybe he'll build it this year and we'll get to see an update uh, or maybe he already built it i don't know if he did bradley we'd love to see it but nonetheless, this is a great mini build and looks really cool. So hope it works out for you. Next up is a build from Peter. And this is a garden bed. That's one of those that's going to double as a couple of things. You can see here it's a wooden garden bed. And it's got verticals. Looks like six total. Just two on each end. Two in the middle. And they're connected with 90s. And then also see some 45 degree connectors in there to basically create the triangular roof. And then he's got some, I think, some lights attached to it as well as some... Um, some trellis netting that's going down to the plants and uh, yeah looks really great and I think he's going to be able to put you know of course stuff on the outside if you want like you know enclosure material plastic or if you're just going to use it as a trellis this works great too as we've seen you just attach the netting to the pipes wherever you need them but that's a great one from Peter thanks so much for sharing that here's a cool one from uh, Joseph this is a this is a trellis between two art or between two garden beds as you can see here and it's basically just, you know, four pipes that go up, they're verticals, and then they just use 90 degree connectors to go over the top of the walkway. And then he's got some trellis netting in between each of the panels here, just secured to the frame. And it looks really awesome. There's kind of a wider view of it. And then he shared an update last year of the plant starting to grab on, as you can see, uh, which is really cool. And uh, one note here, it looks like the connector is rusty, but he actually painted this brown. The connectors, both silver and black, have a corrosion-resistant coating. They will rust, you know, if they get dinged up or if the coating gets scratched off. Um, but we've seen people have them outside for years in gardens and things, and at worst, the paint has faded as long as it didn't get dinged up or anything like that. But uh, he did paint the, the connectors green, or the connectors brown, and then the pipes are green, as you can see here. And then it looks like the trellis netting are just uh, tied on to the pipes, which we've seen a lot of, and it's just a great simple method to attach the trellis netting. But that's really cool to see the build from Joseph and the update. Uh, it's just really cool to see. We love seeing, we see a lot of builds that are just fresh. You know, people finish them, snap a picture, and then, you know, a few months down the road, we don't really see the updates. So if you build something in the garden, we'd love to see the updates of the plants climbing on it. We've seen a few of them here and there, but it's really cool to see when we get the update. So feel free to do that. Next up is a build from Glenn, and he said this was a first-time post. He built a trellis to create shade over flow hive bees, and this is really interesting. It's basically not really gardening per se, just adding kind of a shade structure over this beehive here. And you can see just use four verticals, and they go up with 45-degree connectors. There's an angled piece and then some T-connector bracing from front to back, both on the sides and the top and the middle, and uh, it looks fantastic. 
You can see here in this picture that he's got some kind of a fake ivy, he said, that goes up on the sides and, and goes over it. But then here he said the ivy that naturally grows here is starting to grab onto it, and he's hoping that kind of covers the whole, uh, the whole thing eventually. It just kind of grows over top of the plastic ivy or the fake ivy, which would be cool and look fantastic. But it looks awesome. Thanks so much, Glenn, for posting that. Really great to see. And here's Joseph's build we saw a second ago, this one here. Here is the mini model of it, so you can see exactly what connectors it is. 90-degree connectors in the corners, and then T-connector for all the front-to-back bracing. So looks fantastic, and looks like that's exactly what he did here. Just added some 45-degree bracing. So really great. Thanks so much, Joseph, for sharing that model and the finished trellis. Next up is another trellis from uh, Cherney, and this is another one that's kind of a trellis over a walkway. You're meant to walk up and down this aisle here, and basically there's six verticals that go up, on one on each side of the you know the garden bed here, and then there's some 45-degree bracing and some pipes that go from one side to the other using 90-degree connectors uh, to add the long horizontal pipes both on the side and from uh, you know here to here and then there's some 45 degree bracing as we mentioned and then it looks like there's just some trellis netting that's secured to the outer walls of the frame looks like held on with zip ties which again is a simple inexpensive solution for doing that that works great as you can see and yes yeah, you got the plants climbing up on each wall here and then you can walk through the middle and uh, if it goes over the top you have a, a nice little you know archway covered with plants that you can walk through but this is a great solution. Not that many connectors, even though it's a larger trellis, uh, but it looks great, and it looks like the plants are loving it too, so that's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that journey. I love seeing that. And next up, we've got the last one here I think we'll look at. This is a, a trellis from David, and this is a, a simple support structure, he said, for some tomato plants, and this is a great example of a freestanding trellis that you can do. You can have as many verticals as you want to basically extend this to whatever size you want, and then he's got 90 degree connectors on the outside and then four-way connectors in the middle. And that's a really great technique for just doing a simple rectangular trellis, both on a garden bed um, that's raised or on a garden bed like this. You can make this freestanding as it is here with the verticals going into the ground or, you know, secured with the, um, the metal stake that we talked about earlier. And it's just a great method for doing a freestanding trellis, just 90 degree connectors in the corners and then four-way connectors in the middle, and basically adds plenty of bracing and plenty of verticals, so that's a, a great technique to keep in mind. Then you can add trellis netting in all the different ways that we've looked at to you know, allow the plants to climb. But I think that's the last one we'll go over. If you wanna see more gardening builds, not just trellises, you can go to the gardening and agriculture section of the community, and you can see all sorts of different things from enclosures to greenhouses, sunshades, all kinds of stuff in here. And basically, you can just scroll through all the gardening builds if you want, or you can click here on these subtopics and basically choose uh, which ones you want to get ideas for. There's 53 different sunshades in this section, and here's all the trellises that we just looked at today. Um, so that's a great way to get some inspiration if you need some ideas. We also have a gardening solutions book uh, that will be linked down in the description. Uh, it's free to download. You just put in your email. But uh, we basically talk about conduit and maker pipe and then how to do different techniques like securing trellis netting and building enclosures and all kinds of stuff like that. It's a great resource to have if you're planning to do some gardens and need some ideas and things. But that's all the trellises we're going to look at today. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. If you have any questions or need any help with anything, feel free to reach out. We're always here and happy to help when we can. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.